Hello everyone and welcome to another video for the ENG204 course and we will continue our discussion on 3D modeling using PTC Creo. We've uh, previously learned different techniques for part modeling where we create monolithic individual components in Creo. For example, we've made these uh, spur gears that eventually later on we 3D printed. So these are individual parts. In this video, we learn how to assemble multiple individual parts together. Right now, the assemblies won't be mobile. We won't be able to move them. That's uh, going to come later. But for now, we'll see how we can import individual parts in an assembly and uh, position them and orient them as we want. What we'll be doing in this uh, video, and this is something that you have to submit, is to assemble two gears, in fact, two copies of the same gear, on a back plate with shafts and uh, mounted using keys. And we'll do that in Creo. And then we'll check whether the teeth are meshing appropriately. And if there is any interference between the teeth over here, you'll see what you see is uh, the highlighted area where there was some interference between uh, two mating teeth. Open Creo like you would normally set your working directory. This is very important because all the parts that will be imported in your assembly have to be in that working directory. Uh, I've set my working directory and I've placed a few parts in my working directory already. I made this back plate. It's a simple rectangular extrude. Put that over there. I am, in fact, using one of the gears that you have made uh, in your CAD task number one, I've imported that, and then I've made this shaft, this shaft with a rounded edge. I've made that and imported that, uh, not imported that, I've placed that in that, my working directory folder. So when I click open, you will see that I have three parts. They're all part files. And uh, when I start assembling, I'll pull from these uh, three part files, which are all in my working directory. I'll start a new project like any other project you start in Creo, but instead of uh, selecting a part project, I'll select an assembly project this time around. Name it whatever you want. I'll call it my gear train. And I'll uncheck the default template because I want to work in MM. So I'll select a system of units that works in MM. And what you see over here is something very similar to what you've been working with previously. You have a model tree, a graphical interface, and um, a, a list of tools at the top under different tabs. There are some differences, as you'll, as you'll see very quickly. There is this assemble option, which is the button that we use to tell Creo which parts we want to import. And the model tree over here is also different. This is not the model tree of an individual part. This is the model tree of a 3D assembly place within which once you start importing parts, those parts, not features within different parts, would start populating this model tree. Each assembly project has its own reference planes, three principal planes, top, right, and front, and its own coordinate system, the same way each part had its own principal planes and coordinate systems. When you import a part, you have to orient and position that part, at least one part, with reference to these coordinate systems. As you're importing additional parts, you can reference them to parts which are, which are already existing, which eventually would have been referenced to these principal datums of your assembly 3D space. So let's start assembling. The first thing that I'll do is that I'll import this base plate. A general rule for starting an assembly project is that the first part that you import, you constrain it fully, and you constrain it such that it is coincident to the coordinate system of the assembly plane. So let me explain what I mean by constraints. You have two parts. You import them in a 3D space. You need to tell Creo where do you want this part B to be in reference to this part A. Do you want this surface to be coincident? Do you want it to be at a distance? Do you want it to be at, at an angle? Do you want it to be perpendicular? These instructions are conveyed by adding constraints. So for example, one constraint that we'll learn very quickly is that 
you might want this part to be parallel to this plane and at a particular distance. In this way, you've constrained it such that it can't move away from this plane. It can't rotate about this axis, because if, you, if it does rotate, then it won't be parallel anymore. It can still rotate in this direction. It can still, sorry, it can still move in this direction. It can still rotate like this. It can still move in this direction. So there are additional constraints which are needed to be applied. But uh, the point uh, over here is that you fix the orientation and the position of a part in Creo by applying what are known as constraints. The first part that you import, you will apply a special kind of a constraint to it, which is known as the default constraint. And what that does is that it aligns the three principal planes of the assembly 3D space to the three principal planes of that individual part. It makes them coincident. Let's see how that happens. You select assemble. When you click assemble, it opens your uh, working directory and asks you which part do you want to start your assembly with. I'll, start, I'll select this part. This is the back plate that I've made. And um, a few things that you notice right away is that the back plate has been imported, but it's highlighted purple. The purple highlight means that it is not constrained right now, or it's partially constrained, which means that it can still move around. Eventually, our goal for uh, the assembly work that we're doing right now is to fully constrain, every, fully constrain everything. You can see the status of each part from here, where right now it says it's not constrained. We want this to turn into fully constrained. Another thing that I want to highlight over here is the display dragger. This display dragger is an option that uh, is, is a tool that uh, lets you know whether your part is constrained or not. If it's not constrained, what of the six degrees of freedom are available to it. Let me get rid of this, uh, um, and then I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll highlight what I'm talking about. So right now, you, you have six degrees of freedom available. You might remember from your courses in mechanics, in the 3D space, you can have three translational degrees of freedom in the x, y, and z, di sorry, and z direction. And you can have three rotational degrees of freedom, which are also refer to your pitch and roll. What we want to do is that one by one, we want to, not necessarily one by one, you could remove multiple degrees of freedom simultaneously as well, but we want to remove all of these degrees of freedom. For the first part, we will select from this menu of constraint, this drop-down menu of constraint, the default constraint. When you select the default constraint, it makes the top plane of the part coincident with the top plane of the assembly 3D space, the front plane of the part coincident with the front plane of the 3D assembly space, and the same for the third plane. And what happens as a result is that your part is now fully constrained. And the display dragger is no longer available because there are no degrees of freedom available. And all of this is happening within the component placement tab. This part has been fully constrained. You can click OK. And uh, now, if you see in the model tree, you have the base plate, which is the name of the part, available over here. And you can even see its internal features. So there's only one feature over here, which is an extrude. Uh, I made a rectangle and extruded it. But what I want to highlight over here uh, is that the principal planes of this part, the right plane, is coincident with the assembly right. The top plane of the assembly is coincident with the top plane of the part. So that's how the default constraint works. And the first part that you import is uh, constrained in this way, whereby it is uh, fully aligned with the coordinate system of your assembly 3D space. So now that we've imported the base plate, now let's import our gear. Again, select assemble, select, select the part that you want to import. I want to import my gear, which is uh, which has one of your initials on it because I've stolen it from your submissions. You select OK, and uh, uh, you can see that your gear is there already. Uh, what I just did was remove a selected entry from here, and the reason it was selected was that before I started importing 
uh, started assembling. I had selected some features, so disregard that fact, uh, th that step. When you imported your gear, this is what you should see. And your gear has all six degrees of freedom. We want our gear to be parallel to this plate. So how you do that is by assigning constraints again. Keep the constraint type to automatic. So for any part, which is not the first part, keep the constraint type to, to be automatic. And then what Creo does is that it automatically, based, based on your selection of uh, surfaces, of uh, different elements of your assembly and your part, it offers you the constraints from this menu, which makes sense. The, and we'll go through these constraints one by one, so uh, I won't take uh, time talking about that right now. So how do you define automatic constraint? You have to select a component item, something from this part that you've just made, and then you want to select an element on the assembly item, and then you'll tell Creo whether you want these two elements, let's say that they are two planes, do you want them to be parallel, to, to be coincident, do you want them to be parallel, do you want them to be an ang at an angle? So we'll define those constraints. So what we want right now is that we want this plane in our assembly. We'll select that plane, we'll pull out, and you see this uh, dash rubber band. We want that plane to be parallel to this surface of the gear. I'll select this part over here. And now you can see that the first set of constraints is being defined. You have selected a surface on uh, the gear and a surface on the base plate. There are different types of constraints available. So we initially selected automatic, and now Creo has narrowed down the list of available constraints to constraints which make sense between two faces. Right now, it selected the angle offset constraint, where these two faces are at an angle, but, and we can fix it at a particular angle, but that is not what we want. We want the two faces to be parallel, and we select the parallel constraint. And now you see that two of the rot rotational degrees of freedom have been whitened out, which means that they're not, no longer available because the plane has to be parallel. It can't be rotated about, uh, about two of the axes. It can still rotate in this axis. And actually, what we want is that we not only want the gear face to be parallel to this face of the back plate, we also want it to be at a constant distance. You could either apply a second constraint, or you could use this option from the list of available constraints known as distance. So what distance does is that it keeps two planes, two surfaces, at a particular distance. I'll prescribe that distance as being 10 mm. And now let's take a look at it perpendicularly. So what has happened is that the dis this distance between this plane and this face, it's 10 mm. But it's 10 mm in this direction. I want it to be 10 mm in the other direction. So to do that, I'll select the flip button, the flip command, and now it's flipped the gear, and the distance is 10 mm in the opposite direction. Let's take a look at it perpendicularly. I want the distance to be slightly greater, so I'll, move, I'll change it to 20 mm. Yeah. So that's how you can define a constraint. Right now, our part is partially constrained. You can confirm that from the status. And that is because you can still move your gear in these two directions, and you can still rotate it. So we want to add additional constraints to that. In order to do that, I'll uh, create a feature on my back plate, a shaft, on which I want this gear to be mounted. So if this gear is mounted on a shaft, let's say that that's a shaft, then it can't move up and down because it would be constrained by that, by that, by that shaft. So what I'll do for now is that I'll accept the constraints that I've uh, I've assigned, and I'll accept the fact that it's partially constrained. Uh, eventually, it does need to be fully constrained, so I'll get back to this later. But for now, I'll just click OK. And now, when I come out, I see that my gear has been assembled, but it's not 
fully constrained and i can confirm that by using this uh, tool known as a, dra a drag component tool it's a hand that allows you to grab different components and based on their available degrees of freedom they can be moved around i would have expected th that this wouldn't move uh, away from the pl plate but it still is so i'll look into that but based on the available degrees of freedom um, this tool can be used to move things around let's see why it is not being constrained to 10 mm 20 mm this constraint is set maybe that's just because it's partially constrained because right now over here we don't have this degree of freedom available so it shouldn't be moving let's check that again it's still moving let's continue and hopefully after we've added more constraints it won't be doing what actually it's not doing what i think it it was it is constrained at 20 mm distance it's just how we're looking at things so let's look at it perpendicularly and by selecting this command drag component I, even if i want to move it to the left or the right i can't i can only move it along that distance constraint here it was the way i was looking at things that it made it look like it was moving in and out as well but it's not so it's moving at that uh, plane that imaginary plane 20 mm from uh, the surface that i've selected all right so now what i want to do is that i want to make a shaft on this back plate a shaft similar to this that i'll use to mount this gear on and then it will be fully constrained and the reason i'm um, doing that over here is because i want to highlight this option that you have within creo assembly where you can modify existing parts from within your assembly feature so you see that you have a base part over here your your base plate over here and when you left click it you have two options you have the option of activating it so right now your assembly that's what's active but if you want to work on a particular part you can select that and select activate just a minute select activate and that uh, grays out all the other components and now you can work on this part you can add extrusions to it remove material from it do all of your uh, normal uh, modeling work and when you're done you can go back to your assembly project by selecting the assembly element in your model tree and activating that another way you can modify existing parts is that by selecting the part that you want to work on and then selecting this open command it, it opens the part file you could have opened it uh, uh, through the re regular route as well where you select the part file from the working directory and then you can work on it so any change that i make over here so let's try to make uh, uh, a shaft that change would be reflected in the assembly because remember that we've talked about the parent child parametric relationship on which creo is based where whatever changes you make to the parent whatever changes you make upstream in the parametric chain they are reflected in the child downstream as well so i'll make a simple extrude i know that the diameter of uh, my shaft should be 10 mm because the gears had internal diameters of 10 mm so i'll just make uh, a simple extrusion i'll have it be yeah 30 mm tall save and now when i go to my assembly file that change has been reflected over here luckily this time around i made this extrusion at the right side but i wasn't sure this extrusion could have been over here so for those kinds of reasons it, it might be easier if you make additional features where you want 
information about how things are arranged in that assembly from within assembly. So for example, if I want to add uh, uh, something to the base plate, I can activate it from here, select this plane, make an extrusion. Uh, let's say that I want to add a small ring around this. Ten mm thick. So, so in this way, I've modified my base part, and if I go to the part file, you see that, that those changes have been reflected over here as well. So you can modify existing parts from assembly either by opening the parts separately or from within assembly. I don't want to see this part file uh, independently, so I'll just close it from here, and I'll continue working in assembly. To continue working in assembly, I want to reactivate my assembly. Uh, it uh, already is uh, reactivated. I thought I was working in the base file, but I'm not. And now I will get rid of the partially constrained status of my gear and convert it to fully constrained. Uh, and the symbol that you see over here, this square, that means that your part is partially constrained. You want to get rid of this square, uh, this rectangle, and you want your part to be fully constrained. So I'll go back, and now when I select Edit, remember that we're working in the assembly, so we're not normally making parts, we're not adding new features. When we select Edit, we are editing the assembly, the orientation, the position of our parts. Edit definition, I have one set of constraints, which I defined the distance constraint between two surfaces. Now I want to define additional constraints. Uh, I'll do that from here, but before I do that, let me highlight a few things. This display dragger, as you can probably tell, can be distracting at times. If you don't want to see it, you can hide it from here. Another very useful uh, tool is the separate window. It's kind of like display and display the way they, had, they used to have back in the day on TVs. When you select separate window, it opens a small window where, where the part being assembled is shown, and you can move it around separately and uh, select components from this with ease by zooming in. Uh, for example, if you wanted to select this surface, you can do that. We'll use it later, but let's first see how you can work without it. So we have this degree of freedom and this degree of freedom that we want to get rid of. So what we want to do is that we want to add a new constraint, select a component from the assembly. What I'll select is this axis over here. And I want this axis to be coincident with the axis of my gear hole for the shaft. Right now, I was able to find that axis. But in case there are a lot of planes and a lot of edges around it, it might be tricky to find that particular feature that you want. For that, you can use this menu over here where you can limit Creo to only select axes or planes or edges. If I do that, instead of all, it won't try and select any planes or edges. It will only select an axis when there is an axis to be selected. Now, again, this was an automatic constraint originally. I've selected two axes, and the possible constraints between two axes are what remain over here. Right now, there's a distance constraint where I can tell, sorry, I can tell Creo that I want these two axes at a particular distance. And if I put zero over here, that's what I want. But a more elegant way of doing this is to use the coincident constraint, where the two axes are now coincident. And if you see over here, now the status says fully constrained using assumptions. And uh, it says using assumptions because from here I've checked allow assumptions. We'll come back to this later. But what this means is that is for a particular kind of uh, a joint, which is known as a pin joint, where you will have one degree of rotary freedom, rotational degree of freedom, where your part can cannot move in the axial direction, but it can only rotate. Sometimes you want that functionality, 
in our particular case, we do eventually want that functionality, not in this video, but later down the line. line. So in that case, you tell Creo that uh, I'll consider my part fully constrained if it only has one pin joint, which means it only has one rotational degree of freedom. So I've uh, told Creo to allow for that assumption. And as a result, it says fully constrained. And that rectangle has now disappeared. If I select drag component now, it is not moving. But if I go in here and uh, do not allow assumptions, it's considered partially constrained and it can move around uh, about this axis. Let's try to fully constrain it without using any assumptions. So I'll go into my gear again and let's see what degrees of freedom are available. There's this degree of freedom available. So how can I get rid of that? There are multiple ways. One way you can get rid of that is by, so I just added a new constraint. I'm adding a new set of constraints. And you can see what constraints you already have. Initially, I had a distance constraint between the face of the gear and the back plate. Then I had a coincident constraint between the axis of the gears internal hole and the shaft axis. And now I'll add a, three, a, a third constraint where I can, uh, I can select this surface, for example, and uh, a plane on the gear. So these are gear, the, the gear's internal planes. And uh, uh, now, Creo gives me the options of different constraints, which normally are available between different planes. But in this particular case, the distance constraint is not viable because uh, uh, the distance constraint with this particular setting is not viable because additional constraints, which have already been imposed, stop the imposition of this constraint. We could either do a parallel constraint, where this plane has to be parallel to this surface, and now our part is fully constrained. That's because we've told Creo that this plane cannot be a, at an angle which is not parallel to this plane. So if, if we want to try and move the, rotate the gear, that would be a violation of this constraint. Hence, uh, 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 our part won't be able to move. And the status now, without assumptions, is fully constrained. So in this way, we've. Uh, uh, been able to add the gear to our assembly. One thing that I want to change is that I want to change the position of my gear. I want to bring it slightly inside the base plate. Too much of it is sticking out right now. It doesn't really matter, but just for cosmetic purposes. So I'll select this extrusion, which was the shaft that I made. Uh, not, not that extrusion, sorry. This extrusion. And I'll change the center point of that to be more inside. Let's do 55. Okay, I would have expected that the gear would have moved with it. OK, so sometimes it doesn't regenerate aut automatically. So I pressed Control g That tells Creo to regenerate things. Sometimes it's slow. And moving that shaft moves the gear with it as well. So in this way, you can assemble things within Creo. And uh, uh, in the next video, what we'll do is that we'll create a copy of this gear, and uh, we'll uh, 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 assemble another shaft, and uh, we'll start putting together our gear train, which in later lectures we'll use to learn how we can move them as well. And thank you, and I'll make a ne another video talking about the next steps.